If you have watched some of my other videos on starting an LSA, you've probably heard me mention that one of the best benefits of an LSC includes its tax flexibility. LSC taxes are super complex, and with an LSC, you can actually choose how you want the business to be taxed. If this is your first time here, I'm Greg Bull from startingyourbusiness.com, where I break down the process of starting a business. And in this video, I'm going to break down the four ways an LSC can be taxed so you can have the knowledge of what choices are and be able to make the best choice for your business. And before I get started, I need to say that I'm not an accountant and this information is only meant to guide you and not be tax advice. So before making any decisions, be sure to discuss this topic with a tax professional as there's a lot of factors that go into deciding on a tax strategy. Jumping in, one of the reasons that LLCs are unique is because the IRS doesn't assign a specific tax status to it like it does for a sole proprietorship or partnership. And in fact, the IRS provides LLC owners the choice of how their entity is taxed. Where most people struggle with this is that the name of the tax classifications that you have to choose from also have the same name as the other entity types. This choice does not change the liability protection of the LLC, just how it is taxed. With that out of the way, let's look into the first and very common tax option for a single member LLC. And if you're the only member, the default tax classification by the IRS is to be taxed like a sole proprietorship. Your LLC will be treated as what's referred to as a disregarded entity. And this means that profits pass through to the owner's tax return and all profits are taxed as self-employment income and then at the owner's individual tax rate. It's worth mentioning that as a single member LLC without employees, you are not required to get an employer identification number and you can use your social security number instead. Once you hire an employee though, you will be required to get an EIN. Next, we have the default election for an LLC owned by multiple people, which is being taxed like a general partnership. At the end of the year, each member files form 1065 with the IRS and each partner gets a Schedule K-1 outlining their share of profits and losses, which is then reported on the personal tax return. The first two choices happen by default. There's nothing you have to do and in general they are usually the best choice for a new LLC as you won't have to deal with payroll taxes. You know, this is usually going to be the best tax-wise until the business is making a profit of somewhere between forty dollars and $60,000. It just uh, depends on uh, the business and your personal financial situation. Next, we can have the LLC tax like a C corporation. It's kind of rare for small businesses to choose this option due to the costs and complexity that go along with it. This is because an LLC is taxed at the uh, corporate level and then any distributions are taxed again at the shareholder level, resulting in double taxation. This is normally best for LLCs with a lot of investment or if they have several owners because there is some more flexibility in the types of shares you can issue and you can somewhat delay the distribution of profits. In order to be taxed like a C-Corp, there is filing uh, with the IRS that you have to do, which is Form 8832 to take advantage of this election. Last, let's talk about my favorite option, which is an LLC that is taxed like an S-Corporation. The S-Corp offers pass-through taxation and avoids the double taxation issue of the C-Corp. The key benefit here is that the potential tax savings on self-employment taxes, since owners are going to receive salaries and distributions. It's important to note that the working owners of an LLC that is taxed like an S-Corp to take a reasonable salary, which will vary depending on the type of work they are doing, number of hours spent working, and so on, but if the LLC has profits after writing off all the expenses of the business and paying the owners a reasonable salary, those profits can be distributed to the owners. So, as a sole proprietorship and partnership, all profits will be subject to paying self-employment taxes, which are currently at 15.3%, and this covers Social Security and Medicare taxes. When you take a salary from your LLC, as you would in the, the S-Corp uh, tax election, you have payroll taxes, in which the employee and the business equally pay into Social Security and Medicare, which comes out to the same 15.3%. Where this gets interesting, however, is that after an LLC that is taxed like an S-Corp pays its owners and all the operating expenses, and there's a profit left over, that profit can be distributed to the owners, which doesn't get taxed at the 15.3% rate. The reason why you wanna wait until after the business is making that profit of usually between 40 and 
a year is that it is a little more complicated to do and the LLC will also be paying unemployment taxes. So this option could be more expensive than staying at the default tax rate uh, when your business is new and maybe not making a lot of profit. And after going through this explanation, many people have come back and said, uh, gee, thanks. I didn't know I had all these choices and now I'm really not sure what to do. And to that, I'm gonna say that in addition to being able to choose how your LLC is taxed, you also, within limits, have the ability to change how the LLC is taxed over time. So you are not stuck with your first choice. This comes as a big relief for a lot of people trying to decide which one to go with. What a lot of people end up doing uh, because of this is they start with the default tax rate and then when the business starts making some more uh, profit and hopefully they uh, start working with an accountant too, then they look at the numbers and decide when the best time is to make this change. It's not only likely your best option for taxes in the beginning. Remember, I'm not an accountant and this uh, isn't the case for everyone and every business, but you also don't have to deal with the complexities of payroll requirements. So there you have it, a breakdown of the four tax options for your LLC. I hope this clears up any confusion and helps you choose the best tax classification for your LLC. But if not, check out Starting Your Business com where I have a lot more resources. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you will consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more insightful content. Remember, always consult a tax professional for personalized advice. Thanks.